Hello everybody, favourite or most used sunscreens. It's very, very dapply light out here, I'm afraid. I'm not afraid, it's gorgeous out here, which is why I'm shooting outside, but it's not ideal for lighting. And there's also a tractor going up and down a field, two fields away, making loads of noise. And as it comes closer, it's like the world's ending. So you'll have to excuse the outdoor filming problems. But as I said, the weather is beautiful. I am a real sun worshipper in that if it's warm outside, I feel like I have to be in it. It really makes me feel lovely and healthy and alive. But I also know that if I'm out in the sun, I need to have my sunscreen on. And so I thought I'd talk you through the ones that I use the most, because it seems to be an ongoing problem for people, finding a good facial sunscreen. What I use might not suit everybody, so I'll tell you a little bit about my skin and how I use my sunscreen. I have pretty normal, normal to dry skin. Um, can be a bit dryish. Can get a little bit oily on the T-zone at times doesn't burn very easily, say sort of average, doesn't burn quickly, but I'm not, um, I'm slightly olive toned, but I'm not really very olive toned, so it can't sort of cope with lots and lots of hot sun, no sunscreen. Um, I am 39, I don't really have that much sun damage, which is surprising considering the number of years that I baked myself on holidays to Greece. Um, day in, day out, for sort of 7, 10, 14 days at a time. Ah, oh, those days when I actually used to go on holiday. Um, so, just pretty normal. There's nothing of note, essentially, about my skin that would affect my how I use my sunscreen. I've never particularly enjoyed putting on sunscreen. I know that many of you don't either. You sort of see it as a necessary thing, but it's... A practical thing and you don't see it as a lovely part of your uh, skincare routine. So we're all on that eternal hunt really to find sunscreens that feel nice, don't interrupt our makeup, um, uh, don't feel slidey, don't feel chalky, don't leave a horrible residue and that seems to be, you know, products that tick all of those boxes are the holy grail skincare products. So Hopefully some of the ones that I'm going to show you might be your holy grail things too. Okay, let's get cracking on the favourites. So, number one, I think possibly of all time, and I only discovered this last year, but it's absolutely amazing. It's like my dream sunscreen. It's the Elizabeth Arden Great 8 8 hour sunscreen. It is an SPF 35, not a 50. Um, However, like I said, I don't burn that easily and I reapply often if I'm going to be out and about in the sun. I probably wouldn't use this on the beach, um, but for everything else and for every day, I adore it. It's so light, so fresh. Uh, it's almost, it almost feels like a gel cream, but it just completely disappears straight away and it feels cooling and it's just gorgeous. If you don't like fragrance, then possibly it's not the right one for you, but I find that most sunscreens are fragranced to a certain extent. This, I think, has been fragranced with their um, white tea, maybe, one of their perfumes that they have. I think it's gorgeous, and I, I, it just adds to how much I enjoy using it. But, you know, some people, I just thought I'd point that out. Now, if you've got oily skin or combination skin, you will love this. And I think you'll probably find you don't need any kind of moisturiser underneath. If you've got dry skin, you'll probably need a little bit more moisture than this gives. As I said, it's very lightweight, very fresh, uh, dries straight away. Feels slightly tightening, if I'm honest. So you probably will want something a little bit more moisturising underneath, which is fine. I can cope with that. I just, I just adore this. I think it's beautiful. Second one which is climbing up to be on a par with this one, but is very, very different in feel, is the Body Shop Skin Defense, and this is a 50. Both of these are UVA and UVB protection, so they're broad um, spectrum. Now this one feels slightly more creamy, but it feels a lot more moisturizing than the Arden. So if you're after something very, very moisturizing and you weren't so bothered about the weightless feel then you will really really like this one it doesn't have that sort of put it on and let it completely disappear feeling about it but it's gorgeous and really quite affordable so that one has shot up to the top of my favorites list now the next one that's a long-term favorite and i would say i alternate between these three okay so this video is very very simple there's not going to be something for everyone but if you have 
pretty normal skin with not many issues um, you know that really cause you problems with your sunscreen then the likelihood is you'll really like these as well however for those that do have slight issues like maybe you're spot prone um, then this brand would be really good for you so La Roche-Posay and it's the Anthelios and they do loads of different types of this but most of them are very very lightweight fluids that just disappear into the skin let me give this a shake and just feel really really weightless and they are renowned oh that shot out first they are renowned at being really good for people who have either sensitive skin or acneic skin and this one, which is the shaker fluid, is completely invisible, really lightweight, um, sweat proof. Is it water resistant? Let's have a look. Yes, very water resistant and doesn't sting your eyes, which I can vouch for. Also doesn't have any perfume at all, which is quite rare with sunscreens. So if you do have certain issues, um, and you really struggle to find a sunscreen that's good for you, then this could be a very, very good place to start. And I use Anthelios loads, especially if I'm on holiday and somewhere slightly warmer than the UK, this would be the one that I would rely on. Before I go, I just wanted to talk about um, an issue that people have loads, and it's still a question that people ask a lot, and that is if I'm out and about in the sun all day and I've applied my makeup over my sunscreen, how the hell am I supposed to reapply my sunscreen? And there's not really an easy answer to this, I don't think, because if you want to get the full protection from your sunscreen, and you are, for example, on a beach, won't be at the moment, but if you were, or outside in the park or in a garden, and you've got the full sun on you, then you there's no way around it. You do need to reapply your sunscreen because after a few hours, it will stop being so effective. However, over the last few years, these kind of aerosol spray-on sunscreens have got really really good and they do provide you full protection so long as you apply them enough so you can't just do like a quick spritz a quick mist over your face and expect to get the full SPF 50 um, you need to really apply quite liberally which might still disturb your makeup however if it is just that quick top up or you're prepared to spray them on quite liberally then it's a lot less destructive to spray these on than to take off your makeup, put on your sunscreen and reapply your makeup. So they're genius. So two that I use a lot, uh, the Kate Somerville SPF 50. This one's actually a makeup setting spray as well and it does work really nicely as a setting spray. This one is really nice and light, sits well over makeup and just so convenient. And then I'd say the same for the La Roche-Posay, back to La Roche-Posay, they've got the Anthelios Invisible Fresh Mist feels very very lightweight you don't really feel like you're spraying anything on um, but again SPF 50 UVA UVB protection so really really quite comprehensive you just have to make sure that if you're going to be relying on it you need to use it liberally just you can't just do one quick like that so those are my sunscreen picks it was only supposed to be a video about my three that I use the most so I hope you found that useful please give this a like or share it if you know anybody that's after a sunscreen recommendation and I shall see you next time.